Hello everyone, this is Jeremiah Harrison and my wife Michaela. We're back here again this week on July the 10th. Tomorrow is the 7th Sunday after Pentecost. Yep. And uh, you've been with us for a while, you probably know the drill. We're going to walk through the images and the saints of this week, which are happening. Uh, and actually we'll have a little bit of a surprise for you at the very end because uh, Michaela included a draft version of the Advent calendar that she's been busy working on this last week. Well, also, so. it's a little, little bit of a surprise, our location change, if we've noticed oh, our yeah, backgrounds yeah. a little different. We're, at, we're, at, we're actually in the studio right now where we where we do all the work. Before, we were in the living room, and uh, this time we're in the studio. We've been wanting to get set up to be able to do this, but kids, it's, it's, and we had to do it this time. So. <laughs> and we have, if you hear thunder in the background, as a storm. We were trying to wait for it to go by, but it's getting late, so we're just yeah. going to do this now. Um this board in the back is our scrum board, and this is how we manage the project. We <laughs> so if you're wondering what that is. All the phases, plan out the, the draft, the pen and ink portion, then painting of the frames, painting the days. Yep. And we're trying to stagger all the calendars, so we're trying, to, we're trying to make it to where she can do all of the drafting of Advent and then move, meet, immediately move to Christmas while Rose starts the painting of Advent. So we're trying to keep everybody working in parallel to be finished yep by our goal right now, September 10. And now that we're have, working with Sophia, we've got to make sure we... Well, we got to hit our deadline. Yeah, we don't, you know, yeah. so we have a... Stay on the ball. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep. So... Okay, so... Uh, this week. This, tomorrow is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, and I'll let you read the gospel. Yeah. Um, but quick commentary on it beforehand. Um, this being the seventh week, um, one of the commentaries I was reading about tomorrow is that um, the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost, if you were to assign one for each week, the first being, uh, I think in the order, is fear of the Lord. The last of the gifts is wisdom. And the church in the breviary this week, this upcoming week, will be going over the story of David. At, well, the David... Um, David at his death, and then Solomon coming up. And Solomon is best known for his wisdom. And so the church is meditating on this, and there's a little tie-in with the gospel. But I have some images besides this image here, which is to, which is um, an image from the gospel. Some of you may already have seen this in, in the missal. It's a beautiful image. Uh, but I also have some images of King David and King Solomon, a few beautiful paintings that, to look at after this. Sorry, it's the purple... So the reading for the seventh Sunday after, after Pentecost uh, is from the Gospel of Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in the clothing of sheep, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. By their fruits you shall know them. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, and the evil tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, Neither can an evil tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit shall be cut down and shall be cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not every one that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven, he shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's a comforting reading in some ways. <laughs> well... Yeah, and uh, serious. Yes, very serious. Um, I guess it's good. It's good to know. It's good to be for our Lord to put in plain terms what is required. Yes, obedience. Um, I, uh, the commentary is a, a rather long, but one thing I thought was the, the few little snippets that I thought would be most helpful was it was talking about. Here it is. St. Jerome says, All bodily force weakens in old men, while only wisdom increases in them. And then, um, in the gospel, our Lord tells us, By their fruits you shall know them. Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Um, Do you have some images that we, we want to show yes, for this? Yes, so let's, let's, uh, let's, let's switch over. This is um, a painting. This is King Solomon. Um, when he was only 17, he became king. 
and God asked him, what would you have me give to you? And he said, I am but a lad and I am now king. Give me wisdom. And God said, I will give you not only wisdom, but all the other things you could have asked for that you did not ask for. Um, I just thought this was a really powerful image of him. Um, there's a few more. This is him. There's King David, an old King David on the left side. And then you have um, Solomon there being crowned king. Oh, wow. There you go. This is another t t totally different style. This is also the death of, of King David, his last exhortation to his son Solomon. There you go. Right. I think there might be one more. No, okay, so this is going on to the next day, which is okay. fine. You, you can go on. Good, good. We have three saints for this week. Monday is the feast of St. John Gulbert. Gulbert? Gulbert. Yeah. Gulbert. Gulbert. Um, so, so we have three uh, coloring pages that my sister Rose did for this week. Um, this particular scene is St. John Gulbert um, forgiving the man who murdered his brother. And this was a major point of his conversion. Before this, he was much more worldly, and he had a strong desire to revenge his brother who had been murdered. And when he finally had the opportunity to slay the murderer, the man got on his knees and begged for forgiveness. And he looked at the crucifix and thought about how Christ forgave his enemies. And he had a major conversion. He forgave his brother's murder. And uh, he went on, and he became um, a Benedictine. And I, he was an ah. abbot. So he's of the Benedictine order. Oh. I don't have any pictures of him uh, later in life, but here's the coloring page that, um, that Rose did based off that picture. Wow. Reminds me a bit of the uh, story of uh, St. Goretti. Similar? Yes. Similar circumstance. St. John Gualbert. Yes. All right. And next, now this is a very well-known saint. This is St. Bonaventure. Bonaventure. Um... And uh, my sister, Kateri, she chose him for her story for the week. And she wrote a beautiful, a beautiful story. I mean, the story is already there, but she compiled it really well. Um, so this picture here is St. John, Go oh, sorry, St. Bonaventure is on the right. Um, and he was a bishop, and that's why he's holding the crozier. And you see the mitre being held by the angel. Um, and the man holding the church is St. Francis of Assisi. And um, one of the one of the the stories of his life is is that he I forget what he was named originally as a baby, but when he was very ill, uh, when he was very young, he was brought to St. Francis to be healed, and he had a miraculous healing. And St. Francis, when he laid eyes upon him, said, "Oh, Bonaventure, or, or uh, Bon." Uh, meaning good like journey, good life, like what? like he he could see what was in store for this soul. Um, and so that's how he got his name. So you see St. Francis holding the church because what was what was St. Francis of Assisi asked to do but rebuild, rebuild the, the church. church. Now he's so handing, the, it, handing it on to him. Yes, yes. Um, oh and he entered the Franciscan order when he got older, and then eventually he became a bishop. Right. But that's why there's the connection here. I have several beautiful Born images. Bonaventure and Francis, him. and then you can say there's a similar situation between uh, St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Dominic. For Bonaventure was the son of Francis. Yes. And St. Thomas was the son of St. Dominic. Well, St. Right? Thomas and St. Bonaventure overlap. So there's some right. images in here. Right, of right. So that, that's, why, that's why I mentioned <laughs> yeah, those. Okay. They're contemporaries. All right. So there's the image, the coloring page based off of that picture. There's a few more. All right. And the story. Just this a, week. a little preview of, of the story that was right. written. When, in your, uh, the members there, you can download it yep. and put it out. And then right. here. Here's a beautiful stained glass. One of the things that I noticed when I was image searching for St. Bonaventure is he always has this hat, and it's sort of the bishop's traveler's hat, and it's very ah. quaint. I really like it. You'll see some pictures with him wearing it, but there is his Franciscan robe, but he's got his crozier, and he's holding the book. Um, he, uh, he wrote the life of St. Francis of Assisi, which <coughs> you'll, you'll see later in one of the other images. Go ahead and scroll through. It's a beautiful picture. It's just a portrait of him not strong but like peaceful mm -hmm. 
All right, there's him. There's the traveler's hat up on his head. head. Yep, and he's got his writing instrument there. Here is him is and St. Thomas. Thomas, and this is in the story as well where... And the traveler's hat still. There it is. <laughs> yeah, it's always there. Um, St. Thomas asked him where he got all of his learning from, and he pointed to a crucifix and said, everything I have learned, I have learned from studying the cross. Christ on the cross. So there's an image of Those that. Those are two you could think of. They're, they're brothers, but it's funny in some ways to think of them as like cousins, but they're in different <laughs> orders. Right. But uh, my word, what they've done for the church. St. Bonaventure and St. Thomas, pray for us. Yes. Pray for us. Here's a statue of him. Here's his hat. Very good. So, so I, part, you know, Bonaventure, good journey, good yeah. venture. That Hence the hat, the traveler's hat always. That, so. That's why you always see that. I think good luck is also. Good, good luck. Good luck, good journey. Yeah, okay. Right. right. All right, so here's a picture of him writing the life of St. Francis. Um, and the Holy Ghost. And I think one of the stories. Telling it to him. Yeah, one of the stories is that St. Thomas Aquinas was coming in to ask him, talk to him. And when he looked in the window, he saw that that St. Bonaventure was, was working on writing uh, the life of St. Francis, but he was, he was in ecstasy. He was elevated off the, off the floor. And St. Thomas says, let us leave a saint to write about a saint. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not elevating this picture, but that, that is recorded. So there we go. Okay. Wow. Wow. Now next saint, St. Henry the this, second. Yes. Um, so the, he's a patron saint of Benedictine Oblates. Oh, okay. <laughs> he is um, our patron saint then. He's our patron saint. Well, one of them. There's multiples, right. multiple patrons of the Benedictine Oblates. But um, the particular story, which actually, let's see, let, let, let's, um, let's, let's go forward. So this is the coloring page that was made based off that picture. All right, go to the next one. I have quite a few of St. Henry. <laughs> Here's a statue of him holding the church. There's another one. Very different styles, but. Right. All right, next one. Look at this one. This one's so interesting. Like, this is obviously the cathedral, but it's like he's like looking out, like he's trying to peer around the pillar. <laughs> what is he looking gone. at? One? I guess you'd have to I'd, go and see. I want to go. Yeah, I'm not sure what's in the other ones, but I just thought it was. Okay, so here it is. So here's the story is, is that he wanted to become a Benedictine. And he went to the abbot, and he was supposed to be king, but he wanted to leave it all behind and, and join the monastery. And so the abbot said, will you be obedient to me? And Henry says, yes, I'll be obedient to you. And so he says, very well. And then he says, go and take your office as king. <laughs> and so he's like, okay, I'll be obedient. But I, apparently he, he was good friends with that abbot and would, um, if I'm remembering this all correctly, that he would go and, and get advice and always um, had the utmost... Um, he, he did everything he could for his job to, to fulfill it well. Um, mm. Anyway, I thought that's a that's part of why he's a, a patron for oblates is because of his desire. You know, thinking of a of an, a monarch who is an oblate makes me think of a servant of God, Blessed Zita. Yes. And also Car she, her husband Carl. They were both Benedictine well, oblates. She, I know she was. She wanted to actually become an. Uh, she wanted to go into the cloister after. But her her the kids her kids were like, children, please don't leave her. us. We need you. So she stayed in the world. But she always was very close to that right. that monastery. See this pattern. You're the first saint we showed this week. He was a Benedictine oblate. Yep. You mentioned that. Saint John Gilbert. So I, I feel like and you know, in our day, we need Saint Benedict again. We need to. To cut, you know, to, to reestablish peace and order in a in our time of confusion and but just confusion, just doctrine, you know, confusion about what what is good, what it ought to be. You could say our little little apostolate is to try to raise up raise up awareness of the liturgy and the saints to put against that, to set against that, to set against the confusion of the world. Sanity in place of insanity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We say, King King Henry II, pray for us. Yes. A godly king. My word, what could we use if we had some, some of those these days, some godly monarchs, godly presidents, godly uh, uh, rulers of countries. We, uh, so. Do I have any more? Or, or see this? Nope. Okay, there's another, another statue. Sorry, I really Same like in, beautiful yeah, art. Look, and these are some good. Oh, this is a good one. Isn't that nice? Wow. Henry Cus in the Latin. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. That is a beautiful one. That is really lovely. See, it says Henrik too. <laughs> we'll put a uh, link in the in the description so you can see all these images. Um, we, we yeah, you can see and download the images and, and look at them yourself. You got you got the most of up, oh, and then this is the end. This is uh, the sneak peek. Sneak peek of the advent calendar. I've been working away at this one. It's not finished yet, but this is the majority Most of, of the black the and white. Black is and done. white. I'm still working on the feria days. Um, the content that's there is going to change a little bit, so we're still working, um, reviewing it. Um, some definitely some um, interesting things I've had to figure out about the liturgy this Advent. Um, See, I want to point out a few things. Just I know she's going to be bashful. Point. See, I love how she did this. In this corner, you see the Advent candle. One, one candle is lit. Two candles are lit. Each each week, you see it displayed. Yeah. And then all four <laughs> candles are lit. Last year, I didn't I didn't have a way of putting the Advent wreaths, Advent wreaths on For a Sunday, week, right. but I really wanted to do that this year. Um, also, this year, I got it. I, there were there was a few things that that I was like, man, next time I really want to get, get in some of this stuff. So got a lot more information on this one, which I'm really happy about. Um, go down to the bottom. There's the winter ember days. Okay, and then the O Anaphon. So I'm not quite finished the O Anaphons, but I thought it was interesting because uh, Wisdom, O Sapientia, is the one I'm still trying to compose. Um, there's a lot of different um, symbols that are used for O Sapientia. I thought it was interesting. I was like, I just couldn't decide on which one. I still haven't decided, but I thought it was interesting that this Edition. week, what 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 gift of the Holy Ghost were you talking right, about right, for right. today being the seventh Shopping Sunday? I thought, yeah. wisdom. Okay, Lord, help me know what's the right one for the children for wisdom. Um, but I'm really happy with how most everything's turned out. Um, I will tell you also that it's going to be a wood frame, kind of like Lent was wood. I wanted this Advent one to be wood is a penitential season and then we're going to do a new architectural element this time you can see you see uh you have you have the green you have to go oh uh, well i yes but then also yes. for the images in the mantle that's going to be a wood inlay as opposed to like all that carved like what we've done in the past so uh, you're gonna like it i think it's turned out really neat the different yeah. different types of wood each of the wood types are hand painted but it's all inlaid. You, you'll, you'll, when you see you'll it, you'll see. It's it. a little you'll hard to it. explain, but it's, <clears> it's going to be a new look, and I think I think the children will will appreciate it. So, so. I'm a little behind, but I've yep. just been working. Well, we just keep working. Yeah, we'll, we'll get caught up. So, I think that brings us to the end. Yep, I right. think so. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming with us on this journey. Um, we're just going to stay at it, and you know, we have uh, we have a lot to do in the coming weeks to get the calendars ready for publishing in time mm -hmm. before this advent and uh, well, there's still things we really want to do in time with with following the liturgical year sometimes i feel it's so small you know what we're doing now just talking a little bit about the saints and showing you all these images but it's our starting point and uh, god willing we're going to get better at this so thank you guys for being with us on the journey god bless and we will see you see you next week <laughs>